Well, we've seen mega mergers in the gold space, but are we starting to see them also in the platinum group metals? And what will this do to PGM prices? Joining me now is Johan Wiebe. He's the lead metals analyst over at GFMS Refinitiv, who have just come out with a recent report on the PGMs. Uh, Johan, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Danielle. Great to be here. Yeah, well, good to have you back on. So let's start uh, with an overview of the Platinum Group's landscape here. We've seen Palladium spike to record highs this year. You know, I've, I've joked in past interviews that my neighbors were asking me about Palladium. Um, so, so how is it looking now, though? Yeah, now it looks very much as uh, represented in the prices as well. With now, I mean the fundamentals. So, I mean, we just did the report, the survey, 2019 PGMs, covering mainly on platinum and palladium. And contrary to maybe gold and silver that we talk about on your show quite often as well, the fundamentals actually speak quite well to the current price developments in platinum and palladium too. For example, without going into the detail just yet, um, the platinum is having a market surplus of around um, 150 to 200,000 ounces, being also reflected in the price that continues to remain subdued despite short-term rallies, whereas palladiums being uh, continued in stonking deficits up to like 1.5 million ounces, um, and, and even more also reflecting in, in, in considerable tightness in the market. And you see the price, obviously, as you already indicated by some of your neighbors now having interest in it, uh, rising as a response. So in that sense, that sentiment still is very much present. And that's the general landscape that we mm. think is going to continue in, the, in this year as well. And, and let's look on, on the merger front here. Um, you know, Savania and Lanman uh, merging to create the world's largest platinum miner. Uh, so is this a new trend we're going to be seeing more of consolidation in the platinum space? Yeah, so consolidation, we've seen that already in the last couple of years, at least a lot of talk of it. Now, actually, Sebani coming into the new, being the new kid on the block, uh, acquiring some of the assets that have been troubled for quite a while. I mean, South Africa is a, is a high cost production region and with like prices being under pressure, particularly on the platinum side, because they're mainly platinum miners and palladium comes as a byproduct. It's a great byproduct uh, considering the current prices, but at least it, it's been under pressure for quite a while. And you have like a strong union presence in terms of you can't just restructure your operations there in, in terms of labor. So in that sense, it's, it's good that new um, entrants are coming in and trying to shore up things um, at least in line with what the market really needs and expects. And in that sense, uh, Sibanya has done that with the Lonmin now recently being approved and uh, some other assets. Amplatz has sold some of its assets. I mean, we don't have any like major mergers on the horizon just yet, but we wouldn't be surprised if some more activity would be taking uh, taking place well, in that space for part, sure. Do you, oh, Johan, do you think part of the reason is that we're seeing um, supply shortages? What are we seeing in terms of, in terms of supply here on the platinum front? Yeah, on the platinum front, we don't really see a shortage because we still have a surplus of the market, albeit a small one, right? And particularly also on the demand side, it remains under pressure with the uh, diesel scandal having an effect on the auto catalyst fabrication there. Diesels obviously use a lot of platinum and therefore uh, with the switch now, more people buying gasoline cars and that sort of stuff and uh, hybrid vehicles and, and battery electric vehicles. So the demand side is likely going to um, remain under pressure, even contract, at least in the auto catalyst yeah. space. So in that sense, um, supplies not in shortage well, also being um, helped by auto catalyst recycling, right? Because all those auto catalysts that get installed on the cars also come back and get uh, refined into well, platinum and, and palladium ounces. So in that sense, um, mine supply has to adjust to I, that to that environment. I'm happy you're bringing up the 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 battery component because what does this mean for PGMs in 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 the future? I mean, we're just seeing you know electric vehicles just starting here. You know, obviously Tesla started the trend, but we're seeing Audi, Porsche. Um, you know, all car manufacturers really jumping on board here. So what will this mean for PGMs in the future? Yeah, that's a very good question. And it depends very much on what kind of horizon you're talking about. Now, long term, we kind of can see already a little bit where things are heading, right? Um, particularly for palladium and rhodium, which are now a very high prices elevated. Um, this could be quite problematic because um, they're so concentrated in the automotive space, palladium 80%, rhodium I think up to 90%, and if for example we certainly don't need after treatments anymore because everybody's driving battery electric, then we will have to find some kind of a new application that will absorb that sort of metal. But that is further out. Until we're there, we, we're still like talking maybe 10 years. Um, in the meantime, platinum, for example, has that for, in, in that sense a little bit more of a diversified 
um, portfolio. We've got jewelry and some other sectors that could take some of the slack, but they will also be affected going forward. But at least on the automotive front, on the battery electric, on the electrification front, fuel cells could also form a like um, a potential um, a powertrain alternative, and in that um, pick up some of the slack that our catalysts leave behind, pick up that demand in and fuel cell going forward. Mm, it'll be really interesting to watch how that unfolds. Johan, thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Danielle. Yeah, and thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow.